Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 60 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. Today, got a few things I want to work on, and the first of them may make some of you cringe. Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds, but I got to do a little bit with bees. Not a lot. I don't have to breed. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy to say. So let me, let me, let me go through what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes, figuring out uh, what all is necessary for next step. So the next age that we're going to break into pretty soon, um, I'm going to continue playing with mechanism, doing other mechanism related things, but I'd like to progress into the draconic age. This will get me access to a bunch of really nice stuff. Um, among which, uh, you know, will be some really nice automation abilities, some really nice power transfer abilities, um, and some neat teleportation abilities. One of my favorite um, abilities from uh, Draconic Evolution is the Advanced Dislocator, which is a cool little device that allows me to teleport all over the place. I like it. I'm looking forward to it. I want to have it. Um, not that, you know, the receiver is terrible, but it would remove the need to have receivers at all the different locations I might want to teleport to at some point in the future. Um, so that said, uh, some of the things it requires are the Wyvern Core, which requires Ludicrite. And in digging through JEI, Ludicrite made from Plutonium, Plutonium made from Plutonium dust, Plutonium dust made in the Cyanite reprocessor, I believe, even though JEI does not show that. Um, I, 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 I assumed Plutonium was made in here. Maybe I am wrong, because there is no Cyanite reprocessor. Um, so I don't know how Cyanite turns into Plutonium. I imagine that there is somehow like a way for that to happen, but uh, I'm actually... N oh, there it is, in the Carpenter with water. So that's how he has that going. Okay, cool. So why did Plutonium... Oh, that it wasn't there. Okay, cool. So two Cyanite ingots uh, with that, right? And I don't see a way to get Cyanite... Which leads, you can get it as a 5% chance from yellow right ore, but that's not a reliable method of getting the amount of cyanide that we're probably going to need. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's, I don't know how much we're going to need. So long story short, the way to get cyanide is to actually use eulorium in a reactor. So we're going to need to build a big reactor at some point, it looks like. I'm going to confirm that. And I'm thinking what we might do is build a big reactor that's not super efficient in terms of eulorium use, because I have a ton of eulorium. And, uh, you know, like not a ton ton, but like 1,634. That seems like a lot of Eulorium, right? What is my uh, situation over here with Eulorium being stored in here? Did I give you an uh, upgrade? I did not. So let's give you an upgrade. You know what? Let me give you a, well, I think diamond upgrade should be fine. That should be cool. You can hold, uh, you know, 256 stacks of it now. We currently have 25, so we can have 10 times as much. So we'll have uh, 16,000 yellow, yellow right ore before we start uh, running into an issue. Um, and Eulorium is a yellow lens. I don't know if I have that one. I do. So we could start, you know, filtering on yellow. I think right now we're filtering red, which I probably don't need anymore. What was I filtering on red for again? Probably for the ruby ore. So I think we're good on Ruby and Chrome right now, or at least we'll, we'll pretend we are. So now we're getting uh, slightly more Eulorium uh, and probably Glowstone and a few other things. So that's part of the reason. That's some of the things I've been looking at, right? <laughs> um, so looking at Draconium, um, right? So like, and we're gonna use Wyvern Cores for a lot of things, right? So Wyvern Cores are a frequently used um, item in Draconic Evolution. The other thing is Draconic Cores, uh, these guys requiring refined obsidian and diamond, all this stuff. We're going to have to like get around to figuring out how to automate some of those things uh, and get more of them. And then finally, the dislocation dude. Uh, we're also going to dis dislocate a receptacle when we get to a wither automation process to get lots of nether stars. Um, but, but, but the real hassle in any of these is the teleportation core. It requires pulsating mesh, which is made with pulsating propolis, which has gotten from a B product called a Mysterious Comb and a Centrifuge. Now, at first glance, I was like, oh man, I didn't think I had to do a lot of bee breeding unless I wanted to get to some of the creative items at the end. Good news, these things are dropped from Ender Bees, which are World Gen Bees in the end. So we don't actually have to breed bees, we just have to go get the bees from the end, throw them in an apiary, and call it a day. Um, now, the other thing I might wanna do is um, just go ahead and drop uh, you know, some other bees into an apiary, and uh, you know, that might be cool. So uh, I'm going to get some apiaries here. Apiary. Do we have any wood? Can we can we have some wood, please? Thank you. 
Thank you. Now we're happy. Cool. So we've got apiaries, uh, and I'm making myself a scoop because we're going to need that for bee collecting. Hooray. Uh, and is my receiver done yet? Yay, it is. Cool. Um, speaking of not having to do this anymore, it would be nice. Uh, I need to get a receiver because I figured, hey, if I'm going to the end, why not link a power card up here? And uh, while we're at it, set all to out. Remember, we killed the end dragon way early on in the series. So don't have to worry about her uh, messing up any of my plans. The uh, that that should be cool. So I'm ready to visit the end, right? We got a matter receiver, a power cell. Uh, we've got a way home from the end. We've got this with me. We always have a wireless crafting terminal here. Uh, the apiaries can stay. I presume there's no need to bring them with me. Uh, and the configurator can stay as well until we need it. Um, so plan, pop over to this portal. Uh, I hope that this is the correct destination for the end portal. I'm honestly not sure because uh, at some point during upgrading the pack, I lost my waypoint that was here. Um, and I had to look up an old video and just look at, you know, where the XYZ coordinates of the end portal was. So I'm hoping that I am right that this is where the end portal is. And if I'm wrong, then I'll have to go look for it. And we'll see. Back in a second when I get there. Well, we're almost there, I guess. Hey, look, a big lava thingy. Yeah, we'll be there in a sec. So... Lots of things that we need to do before we really know that we're going to have all the resources we need for the uh, Draconic Age. Um, a big reactor is on the to-do in the horizon, and so is gathering these bees. So that's kind of where I'm at. And hey, I'm in a... this is a jungle biome, right? Since I'm here, Meadows Hive, yoink, ouch, silly bees, don't sting me. I'll grab a couple meadows. Ow. I'm just going to stick with my AE system from now. It's the beautiful thing about uh, having this wireless dude. What are you doing out here, witch? Beat it. I don't want your drops. Hey, look, here's a big thing that falls. Sweet. I found that by accident. Uh, any other beehives in the immediate vicinity, which might be nice. Uh, there's another meadows. I don't need any more of those. A forestry, though, I'll take. Or a forest hive. They actually do hurt quite a bit. I, I noticed there's a thing called a bee smoker. Calms wild bees. So am I correct in assuming maybe that would make it so they don't sting you when you break their hive? I don't know. But I can take the damage. She hit zombies. I don't know why I came out here close to nighttime. I was going to look to see if there was like a jungle hive nearby, but I'm not seeing one. And if I don't find one in a second, I will probably wind up not worrying about it. Because I don't know that I need it. I just figured like, let's get the two base bee types, right? Forest, forest and, and meadows. Um, and that should be fine. So let's put you guys away. I love that so much. Infinite range AE system. You like can't go wrong with that, right? This is a big hole. Uh, end portal should be in this general direction. Hey, there it is. Sweet, I was right. Ha, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, so that's cool. So let's pop through. Yoinks. Uh, and we can call this the end. Cool. So now I should be able to teleport to and from here easily enough courtesy of my matter transmitter system. So I'm guessing these are the hives that are going to have ender bees in them. Ender hives? Yeah, look, we already got mysterious combs. Sweet. So let's get a couple of these, if I may. I'm imagining they won't be too hard to come across. Just so we have, like, a few, right? Couldn't hurt to have a couple extras. Come on, health, regen a little bit for me, would you? Thank you. So, pristine stock is a good thing, as I recall. Nice. All right, so that's the extent of bee breeding that we're going to have to do. You know what I should do is uh, grab a piston here and bring this egg, because guess what flowers these uh, bees need? The egg. 
How convenient. Is my magnet in here? It is. Cool. I want to make sure this egg doesn't go anywhere. Like, you know, crazy. Magnet on. Thank you. And to home we go. Poof. Uh, the ender bees uh, apparently need to live in like a standard style biome. So I'm gonna go throw them in the same chunk that my solar array is in uh, that place out there. You know what I'm talking about. So let's get uh, queens uh, forestry. So let's get one. So I know I'm gonna need two sets of ender, or, or, or I'm gonna need you know a decent amount of these mysterious gomes, right? Uh, let's get our meadows princess and drone and a forestry or a forest princess and drone. This is ignoble stock. Did I get a a good? This is pristine stop. Ignoble is not ideal, but eh, we'll deal with it for now. I'm not I'm not gonna go too deep into bees. We'll see. We might get into bees. We might not. I haven't fully decided. I don't really know. We're also going to want. Uh, item conduits. I will probably want a few more of you. A few more of you. How fun. Um, just a few more would be nice. Thank you. Uh, and filters. We'll probably want filters. Um, I don't know if there's anything specific for bees. Forestry species item filter. Okie then. Requires propolis. Not okie dokie then. Don't have it yet. Eventually, maybe. Uh, for now, let's get advanced item filters. So do I have a Z logic controller? That is a head, two soul, two silicon, and redstone. Head, two solarium, two silicon, and redstone. Larian, please. Let's go. One of these days, really got to speed up or figure out a way to get faster alloys. So, um, two solarium, two silicon, and you guys. I've got the soul binder down here. I did put a slice and splice down here. Nice. Solarium. Do I have a capacitor handy? I could probably just do a double and that would be like sufficient, right? I don't know how often we're like actually doing stuff with these machines, but can't hurt to speed it up a little bit. Um, Z. Logic controller is the output for you. And then uh, what I'd like to do, this goes into the slice and splice. And then let's actually teach this recipe here so that I can on demand request advanced item filters. Does that sound like a plan? We only got two more rows of uh, crafts there. So let's get like 10 of these for now. Missing zombie heads, really? Am I really missing that many zombie heads? I don't have that many. Uh, I guess I am a little bit. Um, to do automate zombie heads, four for now might be sufficient, we'll see. So we'll let that go and let's pop over to our mining age. Cool, now F3G this. And we can see this is the chunk that I have claimed. Now I should be able to just stick my apiaries in this chunk somewhere and they'll run full time. Now like a derp, I forgot to bring my apiaries, but like a genius, I have wireless access from an infinity booster. That is the win. Cool. Um, so there should be some flowers in this dimension. I'd like, I'd like just a vanilla flower, please. Like poppy, does that count as a vanilla flower? That's a red tulip. I don't even know if forestry is updated to recognize these. Um, new flower types, but we will uh, we will see. I'm just gonna stick the ender egg nearby here, and the red tulip nearby here, and let's see if you guys start behaving. 
Do, 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 do. Ow. Ow. Bees hurt. I knew that. Ow. Stop it. Ow. Man, they really do hurt. Uh, go bees, go. I guess you actually see them swarming the flowers. Well, that's kind of neat. If I came over to this... Okay, no, they still hurt over here. Really, dude? How are you even here? It's never dark enough for you to spawn. How do you even exist? So I guess we just wait and see if... So these guys are moving, so that's a good sign. Ow. These bees are painful. Um... An apiarist suit. We can put an upgrade on these to have an apiarist gear. Um, I presume. So yeah, as suspected, apiarist shirt, um, obviously, uh, requiring woven silk, which comes from silk wisps, which comes from silky propolis, uh, which comes from silky combs, which comes from tropical or exotic beads. Cool. Um, so TLDR and tropicals you can find in the wild. Uh, they do require a slightly warm and damp environment, like a jungle, uh, which this is not. This is a mining biome. Well, whatever the mining biome is, bees love it, which is a good sign. Um, so let's... Ow, stop stinging me so much. Let's go home. We'll leave them be, no pun intended, uh, for, you know, a little while, and we'll go check on them towards the end of the episode. Um, and, uh, and figure out, like, what's up with what, right? So that is going to get me the mysterious combs that I need. Sweet. Uh, and we'll, we'll maybe do some advanced item filter smartness here in a minute um, to, 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 you know, decide on what we're going to do. I might just be able to do this with regular filters. I didn't realize I was that low. Um, did I teach you how to make these ever? No, of course I didn't. Why would I? Really? Am I that low on sugarcane? Really? I thought I made a bunch of sugarcane at one point. Have I used it all? I must have. No, I've got 1755 sugarcane. So why... Shift click is a little funny in these things sometimes. I knew I made like a bunch of this at some point. So let's make just a handful more of these, if I may, for a moment. Uh, that'll do. And that'll do. Sweet. All right, so um, that's in preparation for what will soon be some automation around those apiaries. Next thing to work on would probably be, uh, again, reviewing what's required for draconium type stuff. So um, most of what we're gonna need for draconium uh, related things are gonna be around draconic cores. Um, refined obsidian ingot we've now automated. Draconium ingot we've now automated. And diamonds are made in an atomic calculator, it looks like. Um, dynamic calculator, atomic calculator. So dynamic calculators can make them, or atomic calculators can make them. Are dynamic calculators great with atomic calculators? They are. Do we have an atomic calculator? Nope. I really need to, like, do something with this mess that I call a bit of automation that's not really that great. Uh, cleaning out inventory for a sec. Yeah, that should help. Probably don't need this many calculator screens. Or this much of this stuff. Cool. That should give me a little more room. Uh, all right, so let's do an atomic calculator. I must have made one, but I probably turned it into a dynamic calculator. Um, atomic, yeah, calculator. So speaking of a screen, we're gonna need that for reinforced stone and an atomic assembly. So we've got a screen. Do we have any atomic assemblies in here? Not really. We have uh, calculator assemblies, advanced assemblies and atomic modules. We also don't seem to have a lot of those. Advanced assembly, well that's nice. I'm gonna need four of them. Oh, well, there's two. Um, and atomic modules need four calculator assemblies each. 
And I, I think when you guys saw me do it, like, the, yeah, there is a fabrication chamber recipe for this. I guess it's not terrible. Um, I think it's four of each type will get me an atomic assembly. So I could try that method. Let, let's 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 try it. See if it works. Um, four of each type of, of calculator. When I did this, I didn't have this many stuff. So in theory, I should be able to stick these guys in here right now, and you will uh, behave a bit more than you did before. Let's just get four of each type stored in the storage thing. Because remember, they have to be in the adjacent storage container in order for it to be able to access them, right? And we should have a decent amount of this stuff, so we should be cool here. So can you now make an atomic assembly? Fabricate? Hey, there's a progress bar. That's nice. I don't think I had this many circuits at the time when I made this before, uh, but now that I do have kind of unlimited circuits. So you should be able to make an atomic... nice. And reinforced stone should not be a problem. That is just one quick operation which we already automated. And I want to see what the atomic calculator's UI looks like, because hopefully I can automate you in an intelligible way. So yeah, you do seem automatable. So can I hopper into you? Because I need to prepare for auto-crafting a lot of things. Um, because with Draconic Evolution, um, you find yourself using these a lot. So this is a automated. This we can get. Uh, and Diamond is what I'm currently working on, figuring out how to automate. Um, in preparation, like I said, for Draconic Evolution. So for this, we're going to need Obsidian, End Stone, and Electric Diamond. So End Stone... Obsidian and an electric diamond. Now we've been getting lightning strikes for a bajillion years now, right? Um, electric diamonds are fire diamonds, which are atomic calculator. So two diamonds and a blaze rod, or two blaze rods and a flawless diamond, right? Um, so the question then we that I have: uh, Let's off and on. Cool. Now you should have gotten these. Nice. We're going to want a drawer. And the key to lock it. We are inserting on green on these guys. So you, in theory, will go from one to two. Nice. Beautiful. So that'll at least get me going with blaze rod automation. Uh, we currently have 2,560, so we've been voiding ender pearls. We're at 31 end skulls, so that's not crazy bad, but not crazy good either. Out of curiosity, how many of these do I have? 203. That's not a bad number. Not a big number. Not a bad number. Um, cool. So the atomic calculator. Uh, dynamic calculator had multiple sets. Crafting, scientific info, calculator, calculator, flawless. Okay, so I think what I'm going to need to do is maybe ESD this. So I'm curious, what are the chances that this thing can sit in a docking station? Because that would make this a lot more trivial. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Well, there we uh, suddenly have a solution, don't we? So you can be insert, you can be insert, you can be insert. Uh, what we're probably going to want to do then is a counting item filter. We're going to want another one of these. So we're going to want two. And we're basically going to say you're only allowed to have one at a time in here of blaze rods. Right? Because here's what's going to happen, right? All right, so if that's insert and that's insert, and that's insert. And we were only to use regular item filters. Let me show you. It might work with round robin, but I think counting would probably be the better solution here. So we're probably gonna want blaze. We're gonna want flawless. And that doesn't have to be counting, but it might as well be. Um, and you will have to be blaze as well. What we might wind up with is a situation where if we had a chest, and 
and you were set to extract always active, and we put these two in here, we might wind up with something like that, which we absolutely don't want. Um, so it looks like you are actually filtered the wrong direction. Um, so let's do a counting item filter. And you can have one of those. Is it the back that we would need this to be? One of those. Did I derp that here? No, I didn't. Good. And then you can be a regular item filter. Right? Now with that, do right. Kind of? It looks like it sort of should, maybe? Is this guy facing the wrong weird way or something? What is up? So the diamond went into the correct slot, which is good. But you guys get the gist of the reason that we need the counting item filters, yes? So let's do this to test this a little bit better. And I'm about to go through this down in my basement. But this is step one towards automating the end diamonds that we're going to need here in a sec. So that is the left slot. Okay, super confused. We'll figure it all out. We're doing it live. Conduits, please. Ender energy conduits. We've got the filters we're going to need. That should be everything we need. And if I need anything else, guess what? I can go get it. So uh, we'll stick another one of these dudes here. We will put down the atomic calculator inside of it. We will get it some power. Uh, and in this instance, we actually need it uh, to be accessing it from behind, right? So on the south side here, we will insert with a counting item filter of one blaze rod. On this side, we will insert with a counting item filter of one blaze rod. And back here, Come on, giant block, get out of my way. You're, we will insert with a regular filter with flawless diamonds. Cool. Uh, and that's how we're doing these. And then we usually extract from the bottom on what ground would be what I usually use. Yeah. Cool. So in theory now, Let's prep this thing and say that one of you plus two of you goes into a chest. And that would be this chest. And they should find their way into here. Why are you not working right? Why are you putting into weird spots? Why would that go into that? I thought this thing was like specifically sided. Isn't it? Isn't it intentionally sided? All right, so let's see. Uh, let's just do the diamond first, right? Where are you gonna land? You're gonna land in that. Okay, so that's weird. I wouldn't think that that would be the case, but it is being the case. So let's switch it so that you're not the diamond. Let's try the diamond here. And is that the correct slot for the diamond to go? Yes, hooray. Uh, which means that now we're going to try one of you. You went into there. Yay! Now we're working. Cool. Uh, and then we can get ourselves a fire diamond. And that is your output. Taught. To here. Now we know how to make fire diamonds, right? Um, I'm hoping, this shouldn't be too bad because I've actually got wiring over here, but I'm hoping that I can pipe in and out with a chest. Let's see if I can. Because if I can, then this should be a relatively straightforward process. So uh, north will be extract always active, south will be insert. And let's prep the uh, crafting recipe here, but we will basically say you 
are about to yield. Now this thing has 14.8 million RF stored in it. I think it uses what, like 0.1? Not even 0.1, nice. I don't know why I put that in there like that because I was testing item transfers, but we'll test them in a second here. Let's just get the pattern, I guess. Uh, can I get some more? I should actually have blazes rods available to me, right? They are automatically, yes they are, okay. Uh, diamonds, let's get a fire diamond crafted. So in theory, this should work. It already finished before I got down there, which is cool. Nice. So are you gonna work? Oh, and I wanna test, let's do south. We'll be extract on brown, always active. And you, for now, we'll make this Insert on brown, extract on green, right? Yay. Beautifully easy. Not a problem at all. Uh, except you don't want to extract. Why you no extract? Why you no extract? Why you no extract? Don't tell me that I have to extract from the bottom. Today we're learning about things I don't like to see happening. I might have to extract from the bottom on you. And if that's the case, I'm going to have, because I don't know if I can break and replace this conductor mast without losing all the energy in it. But we'll find out. Extract on brown always active, it's gone. It went into there, that's what it is. So we'll have to just get some facades and we'll be okay, we'll live. Like facades, not my favorite thing to do, but that's what we gotta do, it's what we gotta do. So interface this dude so the pattern will go here and we'll make can i open you not really um i don't think i need to open you right so your north side will be extract only um your south side will be insert only you will continue to be extract on brown and this will be insert on brown cool and then we can put our fire diamond in here and if we request What's this thing called? Electric? Oh, right, I need uh, actual to run cables over here, don't I? That would be smart of me. Dire wire for days. Start. Cool. So we should see you're crafting fire diamonds, right? Uh, currently crafting an electric diamond, maybe it looks like. It's saying successful, so does that mean electrics are working? Nice. Boom. That is cool. That is super cool. Why'd you get stuck? It worked once. You're stuck down here on something. What? What? Why would you do that? You have specifically been instructed that you are allowed to insert a specific number of things. Hey, how did that happen? Why did that come out? You're being especially naughty. Oh, I know why. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I bet I know why. It's detecting that there's already a blaze rod in there and not letting it in. Um... So let's do this. Let's say, I think I know why that's happening. So let's upgrade you to be a round robiner. So you're gonna extract round robin enabled. So it'll take turns. And at most, it will allow you to have two blaze rods. Will that work? It must have because it worked. Cool, so if I wanted like five more of you, let's just, Urgh, why didn't you round robin? You're a terrible person. Um, that seems to kind of be working. And remember, I took one of these blaze rods out. So that seems to kind of be working. Um, 
So I guess the logic here is that it goes to put it in here first and it only allows one blaze rod in, and then it goes to put it in here and it only allows two blaze rods in. So I think that kind of works logistically, right? Because when it goes to insert into here first, it says you can only have one and it won't allow another one to go in. I guess that works. We'll see if it, it, it could foreseeably get stuck and that would be a bummer. Um, now let's say that you're allowed to, um, so you have to go in the middle. So wherever the, so you go in here, here and here. Cool. And that's an end diamond automation. Sweet. So that should be end diamond automation working pretty well. Cool. So then going forward, if we wanted like five more end diamonds, I may not even get there in time to see this. Yeah, they're mostly done. Sweet. That's working. That's working quite well. Okay. So that's fully automated end diamonds, which we again are going to need to get draconic cores at a base. The next, next part is automating these guys. We're going to need a lot. Like a lot. So let's figure out how we can do that. Let's not figure out how we're going to do that because I'm having so much fun. Time escaped me. We are already beyond the wrapping up point. So one thing I'd like to check. So you're still running, but you guys have been doing a very bad job of making more bees. Um, well, making products at least. So you've made a couple mysterious combs, but you've been like a slacker, um, which is fine. You guys can slack all you want. Um, looks like these guys don't really sting you as much. So I'm guessing it was one of these two that were stinging me a decent. Um, so here's what I'm going to say. Let's come back next episode. We will work on automating the beehives. I might need to move them one block away from the chunk border, like one step closer to here, just so I can run maybe behind them. Otherwise, I have to chunk load a new chunk, which wouldn't be the end of the world, obviously. But, um, you know trying to keep it all within one chunk in that remote dimension. Um, and then uh, once we've automated those guys and done a few put away junk other things, uh, what we can do, do I have facades? Uh, not painted conduit facades. I think the Celtic stone is what I've been using in this room, right? Now, I'm pretty sure facades don't multi-block form, do they? Celtic stone chiseled, one, two. It's not gonna be um, super perfect, but it'll do. Yeah, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look towards getting into Dachronic. And I haven't like, oh, you do multi-block. Look at you being all fancy conduit facades. You know what doesn't multi-block is, the, uh, is these guys. Facades from Applied Energistics, but that's awesome. All right, Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Coming back next time with more getting towards Draconic again. Before we get deep into Conic, we're going to have to automate a big reactor and probably do it in such a way that it's inefficient in terms of its uh, eulorium usage. So we get lots of cyanite that we can turn into plutonium, that we can turn into ludicrite, that yada, 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 yada. For now, take it easy.